On the 1st of February 2023, Netlify shocked the development world by purchasing Gatsby. Now, as Netlify is the most used JavaScript hosting platform in the world, does this signal a potential dethroning of the current champ Next.js? Now, assuming Netlify will start to focus on more Gatsby friendly features moving forward, this might be the perfect time to give Gatsby a trial. Now, if you have a spare 10 to 20 minutes and you want to learn how to become a Gatsby contentful Netlify ninja, then this, my friend, is the video for you. In this video, I'm going to take you through a step by step process, starting from nothing and ending with a hosted website that you can deploy to within minutes. You're going to learn how to set up Gatsby with Contentful CMS and then deploy and host this new site on Netlify all for free. I'm also going to avoid some of the common pitfalls that you might encounter when trying to hook up Gatsby with Contentful. Now, one of the most important things that you need to get right at the start, otherwise you're going to get disaster, is smashing on the subscribe button and clicking on like if you haven't already. Sorry about that. Now, my name is John, and if you haven't come across my channel before, I release a video every single Sunday aimed at making people better developers and all round coding legends. So if you haven't subscribed or liked, do that now. I'd appreciate it. Now, before we get to the good bits, we've got a few bits of housekeeping. Now, if I'm honest, I have a job and I have a baby. So I can only edit so much video in a week. And this is why this video series is going to be split in several parts over the next coming Sundays. Now, what I also want to say is that all the instructions, all the commands, everything you're about to see in all my videos, it's also been written up in the related tutorial below. So I recommend that you watch the videos and read that article at the same time because it's going to make your life much easier. Additionally, the website that we're building can be viewed from my GitHub. So all you need to do is go over to John D. Jones POC at GitHub, go to repositories, and then find this Gatsby content for Netlify. You can claim the project so you can play along at home. In order to install a Gatsby starter kit, you'll need to install the Gatsby CLI. And if I'm honest, installing Gatsby using the CLI is definitely the easiest approach. So in order to install the CLI, we simply need to do an npm install dash g Gatsby dash CLI. After doing that, we can then install a starter kit. If you're interested to know what starter kits are available for Gatsby, you can head over to gatsbyjs.com starters. Now from here, you can see there's loads. And straight at the top, you can see that we have a contentful home starter kit. Now we're not gonna use this starter kit in this example. The reason why is I'm gonna walk you step by step in how to install everything so you have a good understanding of what you need to do. Now, if you just want the quick and easy way, go for the contentful homepage one. However, we're going to be using this Gatsby starter blog instead. In order to install the Gatsby starter blog, you just need to run the command mpx Gatsby new, then you put your site name in here, and then you point to the starter kit you want to install, which is at github.com gatsbyjs gatsby starter blog. Now, the interesting thing with that starter kit is that it's just going to use vanilla JavaScript. Now, what happens if you want to use TypeScript? Now, if you're going to go from vanilla, you can just do an npm init Gatsby normally, and then we can just add the dash ts flag. However, you can't just add this dash ts flag when installing a starter kit. If you want to use the blog starter with TypeScript, you're going to have to use this Gatsby dash blog dash starter with TypeScript. Come from here, you can see that we've got the new command, which is Gatsby new Gatsby starter blog. And then we're just going to point to the TypeScript version instead. And that's all we need to do in order to create all the files we need in order to build our website. With all our files now installed, let's take a tour of the Gatsby project folder structure. Now, first off, we have a dot cache and this folder will be automatically generated when you build. Now, this folder is used as an internal cache by Gatsby, so you can ignore it. And this folder should be added to your Git ignore. Now, next up, we'll ignore node modules. The next one we'll point out is public. Now, the public folder is automatically generated again. Now, this folder is used as the end destination of the build process. And this is another folder that should be added to your Git ignore. The source folder is where you'll predominantly add all your custom website code. Now within here, you're going to create a few subfolders. So first off, API. 
and its API is where you add files that you want to be used as APIs. Next, we have pages and pages is the folder where you add your page component code and any JS file that you add here will be converted to an HTML page with a corresponding name on your website. Next, we have templates. Now, the intention of this folder is to add reusable components used by your pages. Now, if you decide to use templates, you'll also be manually referencing these templates within your components. This means that templates isn't really a specialist say the pages folder. You could simply store any page templates in a components folder or a folder of your choice, and it's your preference. Now, finally, we have the static folder and anything you add in here will be passed by Webpack and will be automatically copied to the public folder. So that covers what the main folders are used for. Now let's look at the Gatsby specific config files. First, we'll start with the King Daddy. So Gatsby-config.js. Now this is the main configuration file for a Gatsby site. And in here you can see or set site-wide metadata as well as plugin configuration data. Next, we have Gatsby browser. And this file will allow plugins to run code during one of Gatsby processes within a browser. On the other hand, we also have Gatsby node, and this makes it possible to listen to and configure how the build processes work within the Gatsby pipeline. Finally, we have Gatsby SSR, and this is used to configure if SSR is used in your website and how it's used. Now, if I'm honest, there's not really a big difference between the normal JavaScript starter kit and the TypeScript starter kit. So the big difference is the single tsconfig.ts file. That's it. In here, we can configure TypeScript and how it works. And then if we go back to our source folder, you can see that all of our components now have a .ts extension. We're now inside our gatsby-config.js. And in here, you can see that we've got some site metadata. So this is going to be the global metadata, which will be applied onto every single page unless you override it. Now, the more important thing is this plugins OA. And this is where we configure each and every plugin installed within our website. Now, the easiest way to get Contentful to talk to Gatsby is to use the Contentful Gatsby plugin. I'm going to cover that later on in the video. However, it's worth pointing out that when you need to configure things, this is the file that you need to go to. The final thing that I think is worth pointing out within this section is what scripts you get within our package.json. So in here you can see that we have build, we've got develop, we've got start, we've got clean and test. So if you want to build your website, test against it, we can use develop. If you want to create a production build, we've got the build command there. Nice and easy. Now that we have all of our website files set up, it's time to move over to Contentful and set everything up so we can start generating content. In order to get going with Contentful, you're going to need to create yourself an account. So you can do that by heading over to contentful.com and clicking on this sign up for free. Now you can create an account using your GitHub or attach it to Google if you want to. My preference is to log in using the GitHub. However, you might just be happy to log in using the default Contentful account. In essence, just do what makes you happy. Now, before you fully commit to using Contentful, there is a really important subject that we need to discuss first, and that is pricing. Now, even though the sign up button entices you to create an account because it promises you free access, it is worth pointing out that the pricing plans has changed recently, and this could impact you in a big way. So for free, you can get five users, two locales, you can use the Compose app, you can have one space. Now, the warning I want to give you is that when you're starting off, especially in development, you'll likely get away with the free tier, no problems. However, as your website grows, as time progresses, it's likely you're going to start hitting the limits of that free tier and then you might need to scale. So the really important thing to point out before you get into development is the jump from the free tier to the basic tier. So if you hit the limits of the free tier, you're going to have to pay 300 bucks every month which means that your free website hosting is going to go from free to over $3,600 every single year just for your CMS cost alone. So let's just focus on this cost bit a little bit more. So we have 3,600 and that's just for your CMS. We're building a Gatsby website. So this means we also need web hosting and that 3,600 doesn't include 
website hosting. Now we're using Netlify in this video and Netlify has an amazing free tier. However, what I found from my experience is that when you need to scale Contentful, it's likely you're going to need to scale Netlify. Netlify's pricing works on a per person cost and it's pretty reasonable. The starter is zero and the pro tier is 19 bucks per person per month. Now let's say that you've got five people on your team. That means you're going to go from say zero to roughly $100 every month. Now, if you look at the grand scheme of costs, you can see that we're going to have something like 3,600 for CMS. We're going to have something like 1,200, 300 for our hosting. So we go from free to say 5,000 bucks per year very quickly. And for a lot of people, this jump in price might be too unexpected. And this is the reason if you fall into that camp and you're worried about budgets, I recommend that instead of Contentful, you look at a really good CMS, which is called Strapi. Now, in my opinion, I don't think Strapi is quite as feature rich as Contentful, which is why there's a difference in the price. However, if you are working towards a budget, then Strapi is a great choice for you to pick. It's also worth noting that the jump from basic to the premium goes from 300 to custom. And I work in enterprise level software and trust me, custom basically means expensive. So assuming you're happy with the pricing, let's go into Contentful and figure out what we need to set up in order for you to be able to add content inside of Contentful that can be used within your website app, whatever you're going to need to create a space. Creating and managing spaces within Contentful is super simple. Now you can access the spaces tab from the burger menu at the top, clicking on organization settings. From here, you'll find spaces. Now, in this instance, I didn't have any spaces yet. Now, when you first sign up with Contentful, it's likely that a space will be automatically generated for you. However, if you don't have one, you can see that within our free tier, we've got the ability to create one single space. So we can do that by clicking on create a new space. We can give it a name. And then we can create it. Space creation usually takes a few seconds. And once we've created a space, we can then navigate to it and we're ready to start adding and creating content. Now, one of the first things that I do on every single Contentful project is make a note of the space ID. And you can find the space ID in the URL. It's the easiest way. Now, the reason why we need this key is that within Gatsby, we're going to have to add this key so that Gatsby and Contentful can talk nicely together. The second bit of data that you'll need to allow your website to talk to Contentful is an access key. Now you can create an access key from the settings menu within your space. Clicking on this, you can see that we have API keys. Clicking on API keys and we get this nice, beautiful screen. Now on here, we have two tabs. So we have content delivery preview tokens, and this is for read only access keys. And we also have content management tokens, and this is for read write access. Now, in our instance, we just want to read data on our website. And in most instances, it's way more secure just creating a content delivery key. So creating a key, click on the add API key. This is then going to allow you to give it a name. So website key. We can give it description. You can see we've got our space ID here. This space ID maps the ID within that URL. And then you're going to get access to a content delivery access token. We can show it because I'm going to delete this space after this video. And we've also got a preview access token. So we're going to need to copy these values and add them within our website very shortly. Now, in order to allow your content editors to be able to add content into the CMS, you're going to have to define some content models. And you can do that from the content model tab. Now, I've created a whole video on best practices around content modeling and content full, which is linked to in the related tutorial below. So I'm not going to go over everything here, but we'll create a basic homepage just to get something up and running for this project. So click on this design your first content model. From here, you can see that we can give it a name. So I'm going to call it a homepage. See that we've got our API identifier. Click create. Off we go. Now we can add some fields by clicking on add field. I'm going to create a title. So I'm going to call it title. And then that's it. I'm also going to do a bit of content. So I'm going to create some rich text. I'm going to call it my content field. Configure it. Boom. Off we go. 
And all I need to do is click save, off we go. Now that we have a content model defined, we can add content into the CMS. So you add content into the CMS from the content tab. Clicking on this menu item is gonna take you to a screen that looks like this. Now, because we don't have any content created inside the CMS, we've got this empty page. And in order to create our first bit of content, click on add entry. Now, in a normal setting, if you have multiple content models, you'll be first asked to choose which content model that you want to use. Because we've just got a single one in this example, we're going to default to our homepage template. Now, in order to create content using the homepage template, we're going to be presented with the fields that we defined on the model itself. So we've got our title text here, which I'll call homepage. And then we also have our content tab. So I'm going to say, hello, this is some content. Now, when you're happy with your content and your prose is crafted perfectly, it's time to publish it. And you can see from this big publish button, we just click this simple button. Off we go. The status has changed to publish. And now you're ready to consume this page from our Gatsby website. Now, another thing which is worth pointing out is that if you click on the info tab here, you can see that each bit of content has an entry ID. And knowing how to get this entry ID can be really useful when you're in your Gatsby website and you're trying to get a specific page to load. And these small steps are pretty much everything you need to do in order to start getting content from Contentful into our website. In the next step, we're going to take our access ID, our space ID, and the page we created in Contentful, hook it up with Gatsby, render everything, sort out our CI CD pipeline, and then do some cool things like showing the Netlify build status within our readme's. Now, unfortunately, I've hit my time allowance for video editing this week, so we're going to continue this journey next Sunday. It's going to be epic. Now, in a week's time, I'm going to update this video. So the link to series two should be on the screen for the majority of people seeing it. So click on that to skip that video now. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing week. And until next time, happy coding.